This is a Canon PowerShot A70 digital camera. This camera was manufactured in 2003. It is a 3.2 megapixel digital camera. This camera has a problem. Now what's happening is when we turn it on, we get no image. It appears that the charge couple device isn't picking up any light. It isn't seeing anything. The CCD is the device which captures the light and turns it into an image. It is the electronic equivalent of film, and it's what makes a digital camera a digital camera. Failures of charge couple devices are very common in digital cameras from the early 2000s, and particularly with the Canon PowerShot series. Now, I don't know what's causing this camera to fail, but I'm going to proceed as if it was a charge couple device failure. Now, I have a very similar camera here. This is a, uh, this is a Canon PowerShot A85. Similar camera, a year newer. This one did have a bad charge couple device, and I successfully replaced that charge couple device and fixed this camera. And I made another YouTube video about replacing the CCD in this one. With this camera, the symptoms were classic of a charge couple device failure. The images were purplish in color. They were very blurry. There were horizontal stripes. That's sort of the classic failure of a charge couple device. Although in charge couple device failures, you can lose light perception altogether. Now we just have a complete blank. And if we shoot pictures, they'll be just be completely black. So this could also be a charge couple device failure. In any event, I'm going to go ahead and replace a charge couple device in this camera. I don't know if that's the problem, and I don't know if it's going to fix it. But at least from this video, you will see how to disassemble the camera, replace the charge couple device, and reassemble the camera. And we will take this one apart and replace that CCD. The only tool you should need is a fine point Phillips head screwdriver. I like to uh, use these little pill jars to keep track of all the little pieces and screws that come out of here. These screws are absolutely tiny. If you drop these into the carpet, you're going to lose them. So I just drop them into a little container. When you disassemble things like this, sometimes it's a good idea to uh, perhaps make some notes as you're going along so that you can put it back together again. Sometimes even taking pictures with another digital camera as you're working so that you can refer to those pictures. So we shall turn the camera off. There are a lot of screws that hold this thing together. And they will either have a fine thread, and those are anchored into metal, or they will have a coarse thread, and those are anchored into plastic. Okay, we'll begin by removing the batteries. It takes four rechargeable nickel metal hydride batteries. Then we will remove the memory card. We push this door forward. And press this button and out it comes. Now on the front, we have this little ring around the uh, lens. You take that off, you press this button, and then you unscrew this and out it comes. Now this camera does have the ability to screw on different kinds of lenses, so that's why that's there. On the bottom of the camera, we have got three screws. We'll go ahead and remove those now. And those three screws are all fine thread, two millimeters long and one and a half millimeters in shaft diameter. Now on the side here, there's a little plastic cover. We'll kind of peel that back and there's a screw there. We'll go ahead and remove this screw. And it's a two millimeter fine thread screw. Now in addition, there's a little plastic cover. Now we're going to take a little flathead screwdriver and we're going to pry open this little cover. This thing holds a, a little CR1220 battery. Underneath that cover, there's another screw. Go ahead and take that off. And it's another six millimeter long coarse thread screw. Underneath the memory card cover, there's another screw. We'll go ahead and remove that one. And it's another two millimeter fine thread screw. Now going back to the bottom of the camera, we have two screws here and here. We'll go ahead and remove those. Now 
Those two screws are coarse thread and four millimeters long. They are anchored into plastic. Now, deep inside the battery compartment, we've got two screws down deep. There's one screw there, and there's another screw right there. Okay, now those two screws are going to come out. Both of these screws are four millimeter long coarse thread screws. Now back to the memory card compartment. Down deep in the memory card compartment here, down here at the bottom, there's a little screw. Shine a little light on it there. We're going to go ahead and take that one out. It's a six millimeter long coarse thread screw. Now, the two screws that were down deep inside of the battery compartment, plus this long screw that was inside the memory card compartment, those three screws hold on this piece right here. And this piece here holds on the memory card door itself. So we can now just lift this off and just lift that out. Now this piece holds the uh, focus control and it also holds the button that snaps the picture and it's all held to the rest of the camera with this little tiny cable here. We're going to disconnect this piece just to get it out of the way so we don't end up damaging this cable. Getting this connector off is a little tricky. It's a very tiny, very delicate little connector. I pried it a little bit with this tiny little screwdriver, just enough to get it to start coming out. And it looks like I got it out without damaging it. Okay, now with those two parts off, now the back cover is a little bit loose now. It's being held by some clips along the top here. We're probably going to have to pry it here a little bit. Now, as, as you're prying these apart, that little rubber door will fall off. It's held on right there. And I've just been sort of working my little tiny screwdriver in here, trying to separate these parts. It's snapped together pretty tight. Oh, there it goes. Good. And off comes the back cover. And one thing to make note of is this little metal piece right here. This is what holds on the wrist strap. And it's kind of loose in there, so be careful not to lose that piece. And now we have the back exposed. One thing to be concerned about is this. This is the capacitor that drives the flash. Now this thing holds very high voltage. And you want to be very careful not to touch those terminals because it'll discharge through you and it will hurt a lot. And now with the back cover off, we should be able to slide the front cover off as well. Get my thumb under here and just sort of open that up a little bit on that side. And sort of slowly work it off here. And there it comes. Okay. The insides of the camera are now exposed. Now when the front cover comes off, just be careful not to lose this little rubber gasket here. It goes around the lens. We will remove this control wheel from the top. It's held on with two screws. I'm going to go ahead and remove those now. And those are both two millimeter fine thread screws. And off comes the control wheel. And next we will remove the viewfinder. It's held on with three screws. On the top, there are two screws. One is in here, and one is here. And on the front, one screw is here. We will remove those now. These three screws are a little bit different. They are narrower than the other screws. These screws have a shaft diameter of only one millimeter, and they are four millimeters long.
On the front of the viewfinder, this circuit cable wraps around. It's got two little pegs that are holding it on. We just have to kind of get that off of there. We don't want to damage that cable when we pull off the viewfinder. And the viewfinder is kind of loose now. And we just have to give it a little bit of a tug. It's held on with a little clip underneath there that you can't see. Okay, there it comes. That little clip right there is what's holding it in that little hole right there. Now this piece came out. This piece is between the lens and the viewfinder. Just don't lose that. That's got to go back in there. On the back we have this screw here helping to hold down that circuit ribbon. And that's another two millimeter fine thread screw. There's a screw located deep inside here. You have to put the screwdriver through a hole in this uh, circuit cable. Now this screw is three millimeters in length, different than the others, and it appears to have a little bit of thread locking material on it. Now this entire metal frame here is held in part by two screws on the bottom. We'll take those out. This screw was a three millimeter fine thread, and this screw was a five millimeter coarse thread. This flat cable should be coming loose now. Just kind of lift it off here with our flathead screwdriver. This cable sort of connects everything to everything. Now, with this cable now out of the way, we now expose another screw right here. And this screw is basically holding the screen on. So in order to get beyond the screen, we will have to remove this screw, which means this cable has to come out. This cable is simply pressed in. We just pull that one out carefully. That flat cable is now out, and we now expose the screw, and we can take it out. And it's another two millimeter fine thread screw. Now the screen is loose. Slowly wiggling things loose here. We can get a certain amount of certain amount of freedom of movement here. And I can carefully fold back the screen, hopefully without damaging any cables there. And right there is our CCD. But as you can see, we've got a couple cables on top of it, as well as this structure here. And it plugs in way underneath there. So even though the CCD is within view, it's, there's still a lot of work to do yet in order to get it out of there. Now there's a portion of this flat cable which is kind of in the way here. If I can get this out of here, I will have a lot more room to work. It's held on a little peg right here. Can I slide that out of there? Yes, we can. Now we can elevate this entire cable out of the way. That gives us a lot more room to work. That's good. This metal cage, this big piece of metal here, is being held in place by this little tab that kind of runs underneath, which runs underneath the battery door. The battery door appears to be pinning it in place, so I think we're going to have to remove the battery door in order to get this mobilized. And it's held by a pin, which has a spring on it. Taking a bent paper clip, maybe I can push this out. Okay. We got it started. Let's see if we can do that without losing that spring. There 
There's our little spring. With that out of the way, you can see it, it's held on a little plastic peg there. We're going to have to somehow get it over that little peg. Okay, well that is mobilized to a very great extent. There we go. Now we have room to work. Now with the screen uh, out of the way and this metal cage partially out of the way, we have a lot more room to work. This cable here, let's see if we can't pull that out. Okay, I gave it a good tug and it's in there pretty tightly. Be careful not to stretch anything else while you're doing it. So this cable is now out of the way. We need to get this cable out of the way too. Hopefully we can just pull that out as well without damaging anything. Okay, I, I tugged this one out. So now that CCD is really pretty exposed, it's held on by these two screws, plus there's a third screw that you can sort of barely see underneath that metal plate. i got to get that metal plate mobilized. On the front of the camera, there's a screw right here linking this metal piece to this metal piece. I'll go ahead and remove this screw, and that should mobilize that piece better. And that is a two millimeter fine thread. With that screw out, just sort of lift up this metal over this little tab here. And now we have much more mobility. Now we can expose all three screws that are holding in the charge couple device. Just a note here, I accidentally pulled out this cable which holds the video, which connects the video card to the board here, right here. We, should be, we shouldn't have any trouble reconnecting that though. Gives us a little more room to work. Now with the charge couple device exposed, it's held in with one, two, three screws and a cable right here. This cable right here. We will start by removing the cable first. And the cable is held in with a little latch on this connector. We just have to we have to lift up this little latch. Okay, and that should free up the cable. Okay, now the cable is free. And now we will un unscrew those three screws. And those three screws are three millimeters long and one millimeter shaft diameter coarse thread. Now we gently lift the CCD out. And there it is. Now notice there are three little tiny washers here and they are loose so don't let those get away. Here is our original CCD and here is our replacement. The new one has a protective piece of plastic over the CCD right here which we will peel that off and and that will expose the CCD. From that point on, we better not touch that surface. Now we're going to put the new CCD in the camera. And of course, these three holes here have to line up with those three washers and holes there.
We'll now put in those three screws that hold on the CCD. Now with the CCD screwed into place, we need to reconnect. We need to connect the CCD back to the circuit board. We have this little connector right here. It's going to be a little tricky. We slide the cable into the connector as far as it will go. And we snap this little hinge over it. And there it goes. Now this piece here has to be reconnected until that little nub lines up in that notch. And then it's held in with a two millimeter fine thread screw. Now onto the back side again, we have several cables we need to connect. First, we're going to connect this flat cable into this connector right here. Okay, I got this cable back into that connector. That's kind of a tough one. That's really a tight fit. You have to struggle with that a little bit. Every time you do that, you run the risk of damaging something, but I think I got it in all the way. Next, we have to put this cable into this connector. Okay, I have now managed to push this white cable back into this connector. You know, it's in when most of that blue is covered up. But again, this was this one's also kind of tough to get in. It took me a while to slowly work that went in like that. Next, we should reconnect the video screen. So we have to get this connector into here now. I did not intend for the screen connector to become connected. It just sort of pulled off while I was working on other things. It goes into this white and blue connector here. I need to slide it in there and then snap the blue connector down over it. There it is, it's kind of in. And once that's in, then we pull these little blue connectors down to snap it into place. A little tricky, but we got it in there. We got those two little blue snaps down over it. Okay, I've sort of wiggled the uh, I've wiggled the screen back into position. Maybe there's a screw up here, and there's two screws down here. All those screw holes line up. So we should be able to screw it back on now. And it's a three millimeter fine screw and a five millimeter coarse screw there and a two millimeter fine screw there. We'll go ahead and put those in now. Now we will connect this cable to that socket. Okay, now that the screen has been secured, this metal can here has got to be reconnected. And this little tab here has got to get over that little, that little post right there. We're probably going to have to use a little bit of a screwdriver. we go. I'm going to slide this little cage back. And of course, it hits that little post right there. We need to elevate that with our little screwdriver to get it over that hump there. And there, good. Now it's lined up. And on the top as well. A three millimeter screw goes way down in here. When we took it off, we took it off through this hole here in the uh, flat cable. But since the flat cable is out of the way, we can make it a little easier by just sort of folding it back. This is a three millimeter fine thread screw and had a little bit of thread locking material on it. Okay, that's in. Now we're going to put the ribbon cable back on. We have a number of little things to line up here. And we have this little piece here. This is the tricky one here. You have to kind of slide that in here.
This little extension of the cable has a switch on it. I slid that little extension in there and got that switch underneath that black piece there. There's a little post right there that goes through a hole in that flat cable, holding it in place. Now we will connect that post on the top. Here, here, and here, and here, four of them. That help hold that flat cable in place. Now on the back, there's one post here. And there's another post here. And finally, we have a two millimeter fine thread screw that goes through this hole right there, holding the back part of that flat cable down. Now we will put the viewfinder back on. Again, it's one little clip here has to go in that little hole right there. It's held on with three screws. These screws are four millimeters long and one millimeter in shaft diameter and coarse thread. Now that the viewfinder is secured, we have to connect this cable, these two little posts. There are two little switches on that cable right there that need to line up. Next, we'll put on the control wheel. We have to line it up with these two posts and these two screw holes. And there are two two millimeter screws that go in there. Okay, two two millimeter fine thread screws. Now we're going to put the battery door on and we have to put it on at this point because once you put the front cover on you won't have access to those hinges and you won't be able to put the battery door on. It's a little tricky getting this spring in here. There's a little groove in there. Now we can advance the pin. Okay, you got to get that pin on there and put spring tension on it. And that's got it. Good. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and put this control back on the top. The reason I'm going to do it out of order is this connector is sort of hard to reach. When the thing is all put together, it'll be a little easier this way, as long as you're careful not to break that connector or those wires. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and put this connector back on. Okay, now this little control mechanism is now connected. Just got to be careful with those wires and everything. Now we're going to go ahead and put on the front cover. Now one piece on the front here that your, it is very easy to lose is this thing. This thing I assume blocks light, but anyway, it slides in right there between the viewfinder and the flash, just like so. Okay. And next we have the front case in it. Remember there's an O-ring in there. I put the O-ring back in, that black O-ring. I'm going to slide the front cover onto the case. And now I'm going to put the little rubber door that covers those connectors. I'll put that on now before we forget. Now we're going to put on the back cover. And remember this little metal piece here. It goes up in here. This little piece of metal here is what holds on the wrist strap. And I shall now bring these two together. Okay, we start at the top. Where those little clips are. Put those together first. Okay, good. And we proceed to snap it around. There's a little ledge right there you got to get underneath. There it goes. Good. Now we can take the memory compartment door. We have to put that in because it's held on by this control up here. Now that the memory door is in place, we can now put the button control 
on top of it. Okay. Now this little control cap thing, whatever you want to call it, is held on by three screws, one of which is a six millimeter long screw, which is located deep inside the memory card compartment. Little hole right there. A little tough to reach. And then we have two screws way down deep inside of the battery compartment. Those are four millimeter coarse thread screws. We'll go ahead and put those in now. And I wish I had a longer screwdriver for this. Okay. And this little cap is on there nice and firm and the memory door is nice and secure. And we have two more four millimeter coarse screws here and here. We'll go ahead and put those in. On the side here where the rubber access door is, we have these two screws. These are two millimeter fine thread and six millimeter coarse thread. We'll put those in now. On the back of the camera, we have one screw here. This is a two millimeter fine thread. On the bottom of the camera, we have three screws. One, two, three. These are all two millimeter fine thread. And then on the front, you've got this little ring that we can put back on. This is where we can put interchangeable lenses. We just put it on and turn it clockwise and it locks into place. Okay, we have replaced the charge couple device and we have completely reassembled the camera. Now we shall put the memory card back in. And we shall put the batteries back in. Okay, now we have the memory card and the batteries back in it. When we hit the power button for the Canon A70, unfortunately we still have the same problem. Hit the display button, nothing. It, it's acting as if the CCD isn't seeing anything. It is possible that the replacement CCD that I purchased is also bad, or the other possibility is that the failure lies someplace else in the camera. However, if you do own a Canon A70 and you do believe that you have a CCD failure, this video does show you how to disassemble this camera, replace the CCD, and reassemble the camera. 